In this final exercise, we're going to look at a few things. Um, one of them is smart objects. Uh, if you control click on your layer, you have an option here called convert to smart object. If I do this, this changes this into something that's a non-destructive editable object. And if I double click on this, you can see it gives me this window where I can go into a smart object and I can get the original picture and I can change things about it. Um, maybe I want to change the hue and saturation. Um, maybe I want to uh, make some color adjustments. I'll just attach that to that layer. And maybe I'll put in a drop shadow just to show you. Oops. I guess it helps if I put the drop shadow on the right layer. There we go. And now if I close this, it'll save what I've created in the smart, uh, smart object layer. Now that's not what I want. So if I double click on this again, then I can remove these items. And turn them off. And then if I close this, hit save, you can see the changes are gone. So the whole idea behind a smart object is you can change things with a specific layer without having all of these other layers. It's actually all within one layer. And then of course it's non-destructive, so if you've created a change in this and you don't like it, you can double click on it, edit it, and then um, it's not going to affect your overall image. It makes things a whole lot simpler. The other thing is if you have a, a layer and you converted it to a smart object and you want to add a filter to it, you hit OK, you get what's called a smart filter. And the cool thing about this is it's a mask. And so I could take my brush and I can mask out um, what I want and keep what I don't want by painting or revealing uh, certain items. And there we go. Now you wouldn't be able to do that with just a regular blur. So that's really cool that you can apply a filter with a mask and mask out certain elements of that filter to get the desired effect that you're looking for. And that's a really handy uh, tool to have. Uh, and you can also click on the, you can see here it says double click to edit filter blending options. So if I double click on this, I can actually change the options once it's there. Whereas if I use just a regular filter on a regular layer, it's just a one-shot deal and it's done. So this is really a powerful tool because you can continually edit things and change them and tweak them and add filters to them and you can really come up with some awesome composited uh, images with lots of effects that are non-destructive. You can always take them out and it saves you a whole pile of work. Now the other thing that um, you can do, um, which I should show you as well, is if you're working with text and if I just type in something here text. Oops. And we hit our check mark. Right now we're not seeing this because it's linked to this layer. So I'll unlink that. And there it is. You can see the text is there. And I'll just change that to white so you can see it a little better or a lighter color. There it is. Um, if you have text, it's actually a um, vector image, and so you can't do a whole lot with it other than edit it. If you want to turn this into a graphic to manipulate, um, then you have to go to Layer and Rasterize Type, and it changes your text into an actual image that you can manipulate with filters and things like that. So um, there you have it. So what we want you to do is to create a composited image. And what that means is you're going to take different elements, you'll select them, you'll paste them into a new document, um, and uh, you'll make some adjustments to them. So I'll show you a couple examples here of what I mean in just a moment. Uh, this obviously is one of them. Here's one of me. Um, I've taken a picture of myself and I've taken a picture of a background, adjusted it, and then I've copied and pasted my picture and just sandwiched myself between the two 
and then I've made some red eyes with the paint bucket and um, selection tools, and then I've just put in a couple of adjustment layers, and you come up with this composite image. So there's like a number of um, layers there. Here's a more complex one where I've got multiple layers. Um, I'll show you the original just so you see what we were working with. Uh, this is one of our students um, who was kind enough to work as one of our photographic subjects last year for photography. So we've got the original photo, a new background, copied and pasted image, and then it's just adjustments to hair, to clothes, uh, to levels, um, to the skin, uh, to the curves, uh, and then I've added other things like uh, filter with lines, a gradient map, um, I've masked out some stuff I didn't want, uh, and then I added in some snow as well, which is just a paintbrush basically and a blur, and masked that out as well. So um, what you guys can do is you can choose any images you like and combine them together uh, to make a composite image, but what you need to have in it is a smart object, a smart filter, you should be using layers, you should be using selections, and you definitely need adjustment layers in there. And I want to see how creative you can be with these tools because ultimately um, they will demonstrate that you know how to use Photoshop. That's your job. So you can use um, any images that you like. I would prefer that you take the images from this folder in photography called raster images because it has well, nearly 500 images in it that you can use. And they're all stock images. They all come from uh, 123rf.com. And those are the majority of the photos that I use for the tutorials. Uh, the other ones are my own. And so I'll dump some of those in there right now as well. And then you can use these and uh, manipulate them any which way you see fit. So good luck if you have questions. Um, Certainly ask and I'll help you out. And that's all.